In this video, we're going to look at finding equations of lines in three dimensions in R3. And so I want you to think back to two dimensions, just an xy coordinate system and finding equations of lines. And so when you think about equations of lines, the basic idea is that you need really two big deal important pieces of information. You need a point on that line to fix where that line is going to be. Maybe that point is a y-intercept, maybe it's just some other point on the line. And then you need some other information about basically where to go from that point to get to other points on the line. And so in R2, uh, you might think about that in terms of slope. So you have a point on the line, maybe it's a y-intercept, maybe not. And then maybe you have some information about slope, which is really a change in y divided by a change in x to tell you where to go to get to other points on the line. And you use those pieces of information to write the equation that line. So kind of similarly, if you think about R3, uh, you basically need those same kinds of pieces of information, but it is a little bit more complicated because you're in three dimensions. So you're going to need a point, uh, so a location where to kind of think about starting, and then you're going to need to know where to go from that point to other points. The difficulty here, though, is that instead of just slope, a ratio of change in y to change in x, you've got some changes in all three directions. So you might have a change in x and a change in y and a change in z to get to that other point. So you want the same basic pieces of information, but you're not going to be able to use something like slope because that's just a ratio of change in y to change in x. And here you're going to have changes in all three different dimensions. We do have some tools that you can use in R3, and really you could have used in R2 as well, though. Uh, and that is, if I want to think about a change in x and a change in y and a change in z, you can think about that in terms of a vector that is along the line. So you can really just use a vector, components of a vector, tell you how much change in each of the directions parallel to the axes. So in order to find an equation of a line in R3, there's really two pieces of information you need to know. Any point on the line. And we could denote that however we want. I'm going to just denote that as x naught, y naught, z naught. And then the other piece of information that I need is where to go to find other points on the line. So for a vector in R3, uh, for a line in R3, we're going to use a vector to do that. And that would be just a vector that's along the line. So you could call that vector whatever you want. I'm going to use a for along. So I'm going to call the vector a, a1 a2, a3. All right, and then you know how to write an equation of a line in R2. You might know y equals mx plus b or a point slope formula for writing equations of line in R2. And so the same way you need to know how to write the equation of a line in R3. Um, because the line itself is one dimensional, you have kind of one sort of degree of freedom in terms of your motion along that line. You can go forwards or backwards along that line. But that line is living in three-dimensional space. You can't really use one equation to represent that line. You're going to need parametric equations. So you're going to have three equations, one for x, one for y, and one for z. These are going to be parametric equations, so they're going to involve a parameter. Often we use t, although we could use something else. And so they all have the kind of same format, though. So if you know how to set up one of the equations, it's easy to think about how to set up the others. So just like I have here in the picture, you want to kind of think about what's going on to think about how this equation works. Sometimes students try to just memorize a formula, and then they get it all jumbled up, and they get pieces in the wrong places because they uh, don't really understand why the equation is the way it is. Just like I talked about here, if we know where to start and then where to go, uh, we can think about how to do these equations. So the place where we want to start, that's our coordinate of our point, x naught. And then knowing where to go, that's going to have to do with the component of the vector in the x direction. And then I want to be able to take different scalar multiples of that vector. So that I take, in this picture I have one scalar multiple of that vector, but I want to be able to think about shorter or longer scalar multiples of that vector or possibly negative scalar multiples of that vector to get an entire line that goes through those points. So x naught plus a1 times t. And that t is the scalar 
that's giving us that scalar multiple in that direction. So x naught plus a one t, where a one is the component of the vector in that x direction. If you understand that structure, then it's pretty easy to remember this. And then the y and z equations are just the same way. All right, so uh, what I have here are my initial point, x naught, y naught, z naught. And then these coefficients here are the components of the vector that tell me where to go. And this t acts like a scalar multiple, giving me more points in that direction. All right, so this is a format of equation that you want to make sure that you know. You will leverage this at different points throughout the semester. So make sure you know that and can write that down. Uh, we're going to use it here a little bit in this section. We'll just do a little quick example here of writing an equation of a line through a couple points. Uh, but you'll use it for other things also later in the semester. Okay, so for example, if I have two points, say 2, 1, 0, and another point, say 1, 4, 5, and I want to write the equation of a line or equations of a line through those two points, uh, there are several ways I can do that. If I don't care which direction the line goes, then it doesn't matter uh, which point I use for my initial point, my x naught, y naught, z naught, and or which direction I make the vector going. I'm going to write the parametric equations of a line that would start at point P when t equals 0. So I'm going to use this for my x naught, y naught, z naught. I'm going to go ahead and fill in that part for my equations. Obviously, you don't have to write the 0 here in the z. So I've used 2, 1, 0 for my x naught, y naught, z naught. And then I need components of a vector along the line. So I need to write down a vector that goes along the line. So if I want the, the line to go from P toward Q, then the vector that I'm going to use would be the vector PQ. So if I go from 2 to 1, uh, the change in x is negative 1. The i component of that vector will be negative 1. And then from 1 to 4, the change in y will be 3. And from 0 to 5, the change in z will be 5. So this would be the components of the vector that I'm going to use for my coefficients of t in my equations here. All right, so x equals 2 plus negative 1, or minus 1t. y equals 1, and then plus 3t. And z equals 0 plus 5t. And obviously, you don't have to write the 0 on that last one. So this is parametric equations for a line that starts at point p when t equals 0 and goes toward point q. If I wanted the line to go the opposite direction, I could use 1, 4, 5 for my initial point, And I could use the vector qp, which would start at q and go to p. That would be the opposite of this vector. So that would be 1, negative 3, negative 5. So you can control a lot of different things about that line. If you want the entire line uh, that starts at point p and go to goes toward q, uh, you would let t be any real number. I'm just going to use interval notation here, or uh, inequality notation here, so that t goes from negative infinity to infinity. If I wanted just a particular portion of that line, a line segment, then I might have some other interval of t values that would uh, perhaps make me start at point p and end at point q. I could figure out the t interval that would give me just a piece of that line, so a line segment. There are some problems in your homework like that as well. Uh, so anyway, this is one of those things that comes up now. The math isn't hard, but this is one of those things that's going to be critical that you know throughout the semester. It'll pop up here and there for different applications that we do. So make sure that you know this, not just memorize, but really think about the structure of it so that it sticks in that long-term memory so you can leverage it later on this semester.